as the Giants are on the clock, about to make their second round pick. We're taking a break! This is Topsy Turvy. Jaguar fans are using mute, 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 mute. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right, well, uh, we'll talk about it. And of course, if you're watching this on the video version, uh, we get a little bit of time to break down some of the potential options for my Giants here. So there are some really good offensive linemen still available. Now, if you want to go that direction, I think the best one available to me is probably Christian Haynes if you're looking for a true guard. I think the upside of Kingsley Suamataia from BYU is intriguing. I'm going to throw that out there as a potential option. I also think that Spencer Rattler is a very interesting option, quarterback from South Carolina. I, I, I was talking about him today, and he was somebody that was really not likable on QB1 under the lights. He was really not likable at Oklahoma, and it was benched, had to transfer, you know, was humbled. And apparently, you know, he's matured over the years, you would hope so. And with arm talent, he is clearly the best quarterback available right now in this draft. If the Giants are going to invest an early pick uh, with a quarterback, Spencer Rattler is the one to take a chance on. Outside of that, the Giants really need help on defense. And it's tough to find a better fit for the Giants secondary than Ennis Rakestraw. Physical corner, you look at what the Giants like to do defensively, part of the reason why they drafted Deontay Banks. Physical athletic corners Ennis Rakestraw absolutely fits the bill this could be the first safety off the board Jaden Hicks is an option Javon Bullard from Georgia hybrid safety nickel is available so there are a number of really good players that the Giants would be able to take here obviously Adonai Mitchell is available from Texas but they drafted a receiver in round one I highly doubt they double dip he got other needs it would just be, of course, they do need receiver, but it, it's highly unlikely that they would take one here at 47. Jatavion Sanders would be really interesting here, or any tight end for that matter. Ben Sinnott has been connected to the Giants. Would they take him at 47? Mm, that feels a little bit rich for me, but I'm looking at O-line or secondary, I think are the most likely selections. If you start to look at best player available, you look at some of the Michigan guys. Chris Jenkins, Junior Colson. I'm especially high on Junior Colson. He would probably be my favorite pick for the Giants here. But I'm not sure that that's what they decide to do. But it, the Giants have really needed an awesome Mike linebacker for a long time. They bring in Bobby Okereke. He kind of fit the bill there. Micah McFadden played well. I don't really see the Giants going in that direction, but I really, really like the player. So I'd be okay with it. What do you guys think? Any, any thoughts there? Or I hit most of the bases? I think you got it, man. Covered most of A lot of, of different bases. options here. Yeah, and I'm really... I'm, the stall tactics can only work so much. I can only talk so much before the Giants actually get to this pick. But here we are, coming back from commercial. We just saw Jonathan Brooks. Jonathan Brooks, Brooks Texas Longhorn legend. In this draft. One year wonder off the board. At number 46, the Panthers moved up ahead of the Giants to, the year, to draft Jonathan Sankey Brooks. I wonder if that maybe could have been what they were thinking the Giants wanted to do at 47. But there are a lot of really good players still on the board. O-line, D-line, secondary, or quarterback. Tiki Barber is here. It's my first favorite player ever in football was Tiki Barber. A special shout out to former New York Giant and now your beloved head coach, Dan Campbell. There you go. Dan Campbell, I think, was a Giants draft pick, right? I see you, G-Men. With the 47th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the New York football Giants select Tyler Newbin. Okay, Giants going with the safety. I didn't mention Tyler Newbin. Uh, I thought Jaden Hicks, Javon Bowler were better players. Uh, Tyler Newbin's a ball hawk. He's not a great athlete. That's the, that's what you know limits him. But uh, is extremely instinctive. Is great over the top. Uh, it's kind of like, not that I'm going to compare him to Kyle Hamilton, right? But Hamilton, not top tier explosiveness or twitch, but always has that feel for being in the right spot at the right time. And that's kind of like a Tyler Newbin type thing. Uh, I do not think he's anywhere near the player that Kyle Hamilton was coming out. Uh, I did end up having a first round grade on Kyle Hamilton, of course. I did not have a first 
ranked great on Tyler Newbin. I didn't think he was a top 50 player. Uh, I think he'd comfortably be somewhere in the top 75. And, you know, because of his instincts, he's able to play above his speed. You took the words out of my mouth. But, yeah, I, I like, am I ecstatic about this pick? I think he could be a good player. We'll have to see how it works out in terms of uh, development, of course. But he is limited athletically. But at least with safety, it's not all about top-tier athleticism. So that's the review on Tyler Newbin from Minnesota. I like the player. I know, you know, my guy Trevor Sikma from PFF uh, is super high on Tyler Newbin as a player. So, you know, I respect that opinion. He's a, a solid player in a position of need after losing Xavier McKinney. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Giants third-round pick. Probably will get a video from me.